Oh, hello there. Um, I'm at the conference now. The conference has now started. Um, and this is the venue here. As you can see, it's, uh, it's very smart and modern. Some of the delegates there. Um, this is actually um, like a, a lecture hall um, for the university. So it's like kind of... Um, it's all very modern in there. So it was very, very much like uh, Leeds, the Exapol. Um, it's got a quick 20 minute break now, the first session is over. They've got a lot more speakers in, but they, they're on for shorter periods of time. So I don't know how much you can see because it's raining. I'm, trying, I'm going to try and get into the shelter a little bit. Um, so, um, this, is, this is the car park here at the university, it's the bath. Right, let's try it. Um, well, basically, um, they've just, the, um, the conference has just opened. And um, it began with a, a speech by the president, who was Lionel Fanthorpe. Now, I've spoken about um, Reverend Lionel Fanthorpe before because he, um, I, bought, I bought an interview, a DVD of an interview with him, with Ross Hemsworth at the Probe conference last year. I don't know if you remember that video that I did then. So I'm going to have to keep wiping this lens. I'm rolling, and I. Um, he he opened the conference and he paid tribute to the past presidents, and then another lady who came on called Val Hope. There is, and um, there's, and who gave us a brief history of the organisation of ASAP. And I realise here that I'm sort of quite a latecomer. In fact, you know, I'm a newcomer to something which has a very, very long and detailed history. It's like when you first join ATS or something, you know, the forum, and you, the people, you know, but everyone seems to know what's going on except you. It's, it's that kind of thing. Um, but um, after Val Hope was on, there was this guy called Robert Moore came on, and. Um, now he was speaking about something called the ASAP Rendlesham Forest Project um, and he went through um, a list of basic overview of the Rendlesham Forest case which I'm sure you're familiar with and you've seen my own video on the subject when I went to the 30th anniversary of that event. Um, now he spoke about um, basically the, the organisation is trying to um, get together with uh, all the, all the witnesses and everything like that, so it's rain's easing up now, and try and um, put together a, a basic um, assessment of all of, it, of the evidence involved. You know, and um, of course, because uh, he, he calls it a very complicated case, there's a lot of contradictory evidence, um, and he says he can't promise they're going to find a conclusion at the end of it. But uh, he, he mentions the testimony of the, of the airmen who saw the craft. He also goes through the skeptics' uh, explanations of um, the lighthouse and the burning manure and the Apollo command module and things like that. Which I, I'm sorry, I have to laugh whenever I say these things. <laughs> my, you know, um, you're all aware of my. I'm sure you're all aware of my views on that subject. And um, right, and after that person was someone called. Probably the best speaker of this session, C.J. Roman. Now, um, that's a name I've heard before. I've not actually heard and met the guy or read anything about him. I just recognise the name, so I'm going to go around the side of the theatre here. This is our theatre. I'll try and film inside later if I can. I'm not sure whether the form is that you're allowed to or not. Anyway, C.J. Roman. C.J. Roman did a speech called Why Everything We Think About Seeing Ghosts May Be Wrong. So that sounds like a title of some Woody Allen film. Uh, it's actually, he goes through actually a lot of things that I've actually worked out for myself. Like, um, you know, like uh, ghosts, there's myths like ghosts are always of dead people. Um, ghosts are only seen at night. Ghosts are only seen in old buildings. These things are not true. Um, get, I'm just turning my note page over. Um, ghosts are very often seen in new buildings as much as they are seen in old buildings. Um, ghosts, um, uh, they're quite likely, the most common place you're likely to see a ghost is in your own home actually, just indoors. And he says, you know, don't bother going out, just stay at home. 36% um, of reported ghosts happen in daylight, and I've said this myself. Um, and uh, <clears throat> another thing is, ghosts are not always dead people. Now that is odd, isn't it? That's a big myth. Um, in fact, a lot of ghosts that are seen are actually of living people. Um, then um, there's one that's known as doppelganger. That's when you see, you see, you see somebody who looks exactly like you, like a mirror image. Now, um, someone's actually seen a ghost that looks like me. 
um, of, of one of my extremely proud and dignified brother porters, or ex-porters now. Um, he uh, was walking through the city centre in Oxford and he came across a man in a suit who was walking towards him, a man in a very smart suit with a briefcase. But he said, this guy looked exactly like me. He didn't just slightly look like me. He looked absolutely exactly like me. And my friend almost went up and said hello to him. Now, everyone knows that, you know, we sometimes have people who resemble us. I mean, you know, the, my resemblance to Al Murray, the pub landlord, is very well documented, you know. Um, but in this case, this guy looked exactly like me. And the only thing that stopped this bloke going up and saying hello was the fact that he was wearing a suit and he was carrying a briefcase. Now, how often do you see me dressed like that? But isn't that weird? I mean, there's a, kind of urban, there's a kind of urban myth about doppelgangers, which is that if you see them, it's a kind of a portent of your own death. Uh, but to tell you the truth, I'm not that worried because, um, you know, because, uh, you know, that's, that is just it. it's an urban myth. There's no, I don't think there's any evidence that people who see their doppelgangers then go and die. So um, I'm not worried at all about that. I'm talking about evidence, I keep talking about evidence all the time. And one thing that, um, you know, I'm, I'm completely new to this whole event. It's, I mean, I was... I walked in this morning looking for people I know, familiar faces, there was a couple, you know, but basically, um, there's, our, there's the bookstall there, see? Now, I don't know if I'll be filming, I hope to film inside later, but it's a very well-stocked bookstall. I don't know if I'll be... Hello, mate, hello. So, my friend Richard, this is Richard from Exapol, remember hello. him? Can You're I show right. you to the Herpanwo TV viewers? Say Hi, Herpanwo TV. That's Richard, remember him from Exapol? Yeah, he's here now. Fight the power. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll be, I'm nearly done, mate. Yeah, I won't no be a worries, sec, yeah. yeah. Um, like I say, you know, where was I? Yeah, the... Um, the, the yeah, I say, it's an urban myth, there's no evidence. And the people we, here, you see, are serious. I mean, so look at, listen to CJ Roma. I mean, he could be... If he was talking about another subject, like uh, physics or chemistry or cosmology, <laughs> He would be an, a completely normal scientist. He talked exactly like a normal scientist, like Stephen Hawking or someone else like that, except he was talking about ghosts. He, he showed us graphs collecting statistics of, of ages and sexes and genders and, and walks of life and people who have these experiences, where they're collected. This is where he got all this data from. He, this is, these people are serious, they're not loonies. They're not, they're not nut jobs with long hair and beads, the way James Randi and people like that like to betray us. You know, these are, these, are, these are people who are very serious about what they do. And I feel at home here. I mean, I like that. I'm, I'm serious. I, li I like the idea of a serious scientific investigation to this subject. Um, of course, not all ghosts are what they seem to be. Um, some ghosts are... Some, some ghosts obviously are mistaken identity. And in fact, I'll give you a good example. Something that happened to me last night. Uh, well, in the early hours of the morning. I had quite a bad night, actually. I didn't sleep very well in, in that lovely hotel room of ours. Um, when I woke up um, in the middle of the night, I got up to go to the toilet, and I was immediately confronted with a, by a naked man with a big white beard standing there right in front, big, tall, chunky, naked bloke with a big white beard. And I, and I yelled, oh, I went, oh, like that. And I, I, luckily, I didn't wake a stain up because I was worried I might have done. And then I realised I was seeing my own reflection I've seen my own reflection in the door to the toilet. There's a mirror on the door to the toilet and in the darkness of the bedroom, you know, it's <laughs> it wasn't, it was my own reflection I saw. The white beard was actually, I've got a sort of like a, a thing that I bought from the chemist shop which I put on to stop myself snoring and now that would wake a stain up because my snoring, you know, I won't describe it to you. You've got to hear it to believe it. Right, well I've got to go back now for the next session of the ASAP conference, Seriously Strange. See you later.